What's going on everyone? It's Ben from YGO from Zero back with another Android format video. And in this video, I'm going to be covering a pretty interesting deck, which, you know, you can build in a lot of different ways, but this is the version that I made and that's Fusion. Now, Fusion decks have appeared in previous formats, notably in Critter. I do think that a Fusion deck sort of taking advantage of Thunder Dragon and Twin Head Thunder Dragon can be decent, uh, at least a decent variant of Muka Muka Turbo. And, you know, in the format following, which no one really plays, but we call, like, Mecha, uh, there is actually a very interesting sort of Fusion Substitute deck that is pretty cool. Um, but after that, Fusion decks kind of get a bit worse. Things like the Hand Rips make them a bit less consistent. Uh, and it's just a lot harder to justify putting that much effort into a 2800 attack point monster. However, Android Format releases a new fusion monster that could make it worth it, and that is The Last Warrior from Another Planet. Now, The Last Warrior from Another Planet is a very interesting monster that when it's special summoned, it destroys all other monsters you control, but neither player can summon monsters. And this is a really cool effect. It locks down your opponent from doing anything but setting their monsters. And with things like Nobleman of Crossout, you can really take advantage of that, just clearing away your opponent's threats and preventing them from being able to do anything. Now, of course, spells and traps will still affect this, so it can still die through other means, um, but it is a pretty tricky card to deal with if you're able to get it out. And its fusion materials aren't that bad, honestly. Zambira the Dark is a card that actually sees play in a variety of sort of more typical beast spellcaster tomato control sort of decks as just like an alternative to something like Gemini Elf. And I do think that it's not bad. And especially when you can go in to something like Last Warrior with it. We could be playing Mariokutai, which is the other sort of material for Last Warrior for another planet, but we're choosing to play Versaga the Destroyer instead, as it's a dark fusion substitute that you can bring out off of a Mystic Tomato. So Mystic Tomato is very good here at bringing out the Sangan in the Witch of the Black Forest, and thus we want to play Versago over something like Mariokutai, which is kind of off doing its own thing and can only really be brought out by Mother Grizzly, which isn't really a very good recruiter to play in this deck, in my opinion. In addition to the Versago and the Zambira, we're also playing Thunder Dragons, as it does deck thin, enabling you to draw into your polymerizations more easily, as well as enabling you to go into a Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon if you have the two Thunder Dragons in hand. It can also fill up the graveyard to act as fodder for something like Bazoo the Soul Eater or Skull Lair, both of which we are playing. For the other beater, we're playing a Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer at two copies. And we're actually not playing Gemini Elf because, as I mentioned, Zambira can sort of serve as a replacement to it. Zambira gets over Kaiku, but doesn't get over a Bazoo. And once it hits over one monster, it'll drop down to 1900, which ties with Gemini Elf. So, I chose to just cut the Gemini Elves. I know that in a lot of decks playing Zambira, they just add it on top of the Elves. But I think in this deck, we don't quite have the deck space for it. The last monster we've got is a Jinzo, which is just a powerful card in general. For the spells, we've got a Change of Heart, Confiscation, Dark Hole, Delinquent Duo, Monster Reborn, two Dolmen of Crossout to pair with the Last Warrior, Painful Choice, two Polymerization. We chose to play two of these to make it like consistent enough to draw, but also we don't really have the materials to make three fusion summons in one game. So we only are playing two of this. We've got a Pot of Greed, of course, Red Gecky, Snatch Steel, and Forceful Sentry as well. And for the spell and trap removal, we've got three Mystical Space Typhoon, one Heavy Storm. That's my preferred spell and trap removal ratio, but you can potentially switch this up. For the traps, we've got a Call of the Haunted that can be used to recover one of your fusion monsters after you bring them out. We've got Imperial Order, three Jars of Greed to draw into our combo more consistently, a Mirror Force, and a Skull Lair. We're not really playing as many removal traps like Trap Holes or Torrential Tributes because we are just aiming to make big monsters that can get over our opponent's stuff. So the Trap Holes and Torrential Tributes are not really as necessary. We've got them in the side deck in case we're going up against a more aggressive deck. And speaking of the side deck, we also have two Dust Tornado, one Heavy Storm as even more spell and trap removal. We've got two exchanges for Exodia, a Penguin Knight for if we're going up against Empty Jar. And then we've got just like some generic good cards that we can potentially bring in. Depending on the matchup, we've got an additional Bazoo, an additional Kaiku. We've got a Can Soldier in case we're up against a Stallier deck and we need a way to burn them out. We've got a Cyber Jar for more removal. And we've got a Magician of Faith to bring back our spells. Now, I think this deck looks pretty sick, but let's dive into some games to see how it actually performs. 
Okay, we've got a game against Soul65, who is a frequent guest on the channel. Always a pleasure to have them on. We are playing the Fusion deck. Unclear what they're playing here. And uh, they're going to throw a paper, so they will win the Rock, Paper, Scissors here. And we are going to be going second here. This is a pretty decent opener hand. Opening change of Heart plus Snatch Steel is pretty great, honestly. Uh, but they start with a painful choice, which is very unfortunate. They're going to send two hand rips here, and a Reborn, a Jinzo, and a Sangan. Now, this is kind of rough. Like, the fact that they only send two hand rips means that they likely have a duo in hand. So we definitely don't want to give them a hand rip, as they'll be ripping three cards out of our hand, potentially. Uh, but we also don't want to give them the Reborn, because then they can just revive whichever monster we, you know, send to the graveyard. So, I think we actually do want to give them a Jinzo. We've got the Snatch Steel to deal with the Jinzo afterwards, so I feel pretty fine about that. We don't really want to get them a Search Off Sangan. So, we are going to give them the Jinzo indeed. And let's see what they do here. They are just going to fire the duo that we did figure that they have. So, it's kind of unfortunate. They're going to hit the Zumbaira out of hand, which is annoying. Uh, and we're going to discard this Jar of Greed as we want to keep all the three remaining cards in our hand because they're pretty powerful. They're just going to summon a Gemini Elf set two and pass back to us, and I feel like this is a pretty good time to heavy. We're just going to fire that. They're going to chain Call of the Haunted, which is unfortunate. They will be able to get a search off this Sangan here. Um, but ultimately, I feel like that was pretty fine. We're not really doing anything too aggressive this turn, so maybe we could have waited a bit as we are just setting this Sangan. Um, but I don't know. We... Yeah, I don't, we could have potentially just waited, but I feel like that's fine, you know, it's not terrible, um, and yeah, we just went for it. I think maybe that was a misplay. Uh, they're going to set one, we draw a Kaiku, which won't actually help us here. We're going to set this Witch that we searched off the same game, because Witch can get us into someone like Zimbira that can clear the Gemini Elf, and we're going to pass back to them. They're going to hit in to our Witch here, and we're going to indeed get the Zimbira. And then main two, they're just going to pass back to us. And, you know, it would have been nice to have had the heavy here because then we could have cleared the way to bring out Zimbira and ensure that it actually hit the field. But now we're in a bit of an awkward spot. We are going to summon up Zimbira and see if it clears the Gemini Elf here. Um, and luckily it will. So Zimbira will drop down to 1900, but that's basically a Gemini Elf equivalent there. We're setting this Snatch Deal just to play around in case they go for a big push here. And Snatch Deal will die to spawn trap removal anyways, so we're not too torn up about setting it here. They're going to fire a Snatch Deal of their own tribute over it for a Jinzo, which is fine by us. They're going to hit in for 2400. Uh, main two, they're just going to set another pass back to us. And we draw Polymerization, which is pretty good. Unfortunately, we don't have any materials for it yet. We're going to fire Snatch Shield on their Jinzo and just get really aggressive here, getting in for 4,200 points of damage. With the change of heart in hand, I feel like this is a pretty decent position to be in, especially since we get to banish their monsters from Grave there. So now they've just got a graveyard filled with spells and traps. We're going to pass back to them. They will gain 1,000 in the standby phase here. Then they're going to go for a Dark Hole, clearing the board away. They'll summon out a Mystic Tomato, get in for 1,400, and then just pass back to us. Thunder Dragon's pretty nice, and we could go for game here. So we discard the Thunder Dragon, grab two more Thunder Dragons, and then we could potentially Fire Polymerization, bring a Twin Head, Change of Heart there, Mystic Tomato, and go for Lethal. So that is indeed what we're going to try to do. We're going to start with the Polymerization, just in case they've got something like Torrential Tribute or Imperial Order, and unfortunately they do have the Imperial Order. That really stinks. We would have liked to have kept the Polymerization around just to convert the Thunder Dragons into actual meaningful advantage here. But luckily we can actually do that with Change of Heart later. We can Change of Heart their Monster Tribute over it for a Thunder Dragon. So it's not the worst in the world. It just does shut off our potential lethal line this turn. They're going to let the Imperial Order die, and they're going to fire a Pot of Greed to draw two. They are going to just go in for 14, attack in. Uh, that's fine. Uh, we still got the Change of Heart into Thunder Dragon play later. And Imperial Order is very nice to see. We're going to fire this Change of Heart, tribute over the Tomato for a Thunder Dragon, and attack in for 1600. That will indeed connect. And then main two, we're going to set this Imperial Order, pass back to them. You might be wondering why we actually made this play instead of just attacking him for the Tomato. And yeah, this play does lose to like something like Trap Hole. Um, but I figure like I want to actually take advantage of the Thunder Dragons right away. Uh, rather than letting them rot in my hand. And, I, you know, if they have Trap Hole, wasting it on a Thunder Dragon is much better than wasting it on a better card later. So I feel fine with this. 
and they're going to summon out a Revival Jam, which is pretty interesting. Then they're going to go for a Raigeki, but we've got the Imperial Order. Unfortunately, they've got the Mystical Space Typhoon, so that will indeed destroy our Thunder Dragon here. They're going to get in for 1,500, and then they're going to pass back to us. We draw Kaiku, which is pretty good. I still feel like we're in a decent position here. We can attack in to the Revival Jam and clear two more monsters from their graveyard, and they're actually going to think about whether they want to bring back the Revival Jam or not. So they are indeed going to do that, and I feel pretty good about this. Their Jinzo is gone. So, you know, I feel like there isn't too much risk here. I mean, they could... Like, if they've got, like, uh, Cannon Soldier Last Will, then that would be bad. But that takes a very specific deck to be doing. Water decks could be running that, as it does seem like this is on a water strategy here. So it looks like they do indeed have the Last Will, and that is probably the end of the game. But they're going to bring out a Mother Grizzly, and let's see if they actually do have the Catapult Turtle in deck. Um, this will drop them down by 400. But unfortunately, if they do have Catapult Turtle, then that will indeed be the end of the game here. Um, oh, it looks like they're bringing out a... Oh, but they've got a Can Soldier, so it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't mean necessarily that they don't have Catapult Turtle, um, but it does mean that they've got sort of lines to lethal burn damage. So... Kind of unfortunate there, it was a very close game, and we did manage to almost pull off a fusion summon, but Imperial Order really does stop the fusion part of this deck in its tracks, which is really unfortunate. Hopefully in game two we'll actually be able to get a fusion summon off, but let's see how it goes. We are going to go first here, as we did indeed lose the first game, and this is a pretty great opening hand. Wow, this is killer. We're going to start with a painful choice, just to get these hand rips out of our deck, um, and, you know, maybe we should have fired Pot of Greed first because, like, we'd like the hand rips at this point in the game. But I figure this is also deck thinning, which is pretty good for the Pot of Greed. And they are indeed going to give us a Jar of Greed, which makes sense. Now we're going to fire the Pot of Greed now that our deck's thinned a little bit. And we're just going to set a Sangha and set a Jar of Greed pass back to them. You know, maybe I did misplay this. Maybe I should have fired Pot before painfuling, but I feel like this is ultimately fine. They're going to bring out a Revival Jam and hit into our Sangan here. We're going to get a search. We're going to grab a Mystic Tomato. Um, we could have grabbed like a Versago directly just to pair with the Polymerization. But I figure having the Mystic Tomato online is sort of safer. And we can always bring out Versago with the Tomato. Unfortunately, they're going to go for a Forceful here. And they'll be able to take the Dark Hole out of our hand. But honestly, I'm not too torn up about that since we can still clear the Revival Jam here. And this Thunder Dragon actually gives us a great opportunity to do that. We're going to go for the Thunder Dragon. We're just going to fire this Jar of Greed just to see what we get, because going for the Twin Head here plus Kaiku is a bit greedy. Um, and we'd like to just, you know, get more options. Unfortunately, we draw another Polymerization. So, I mean, that'll be good for later if we want to set up Last Warrior. But for now, it just kind of forces us into doing this move. So we'll attack over the Revival Jam, and they're not going to choose to activate the effect because it will just get banished with Kaiku. So we are going to be able to banish it out of their graveyard, pass back to them. And this is a bit of a fragile board state, but if they do board clear here, I think we're ultimately fine. We've got Witch of the Black Forest and Mystic Tomato to protect ourselves later, and we've got Reborn to bring back the Twin Head if we want it. They're going to Pot of Greed here. And they are going to fire Raigeki, clear our board, summon out Kaiku, and this will put a damper on our reborn plans as they will be able to get rid of the Twin Head and the Kaiku in Grave. Uh, and they're just going to set one pass back to us. Jinzo's pretty great. We'll set a Mystic Tomato uh, to sort of get a monster on field to tribute over for Jinzo. Uh, it's not ideal, but I do think that it is somewhat safe to do. And we can save our reborn for later now. Uh, they're going to attack in to our Mystic Tomato. We're just going to bring out another Mystic Tomato. And then main two, they're going to just pass back to us. We draw a Mystical Space Typhoon, which is not bad, but we don't really need it right now. We'll just attack in to their Kaiku with the Jinzo. They'll take 600. Main two, we're going to set this Mystical Space Typhoon, pass back to them. They're going to set one pass back to us, and we draw Raigeki, which I honestly think is worth going for here. We'll Raigeki, their monster, summon out Witch, and then reborn back a Sangam, because this is lethal. I don't think there's anything they can really do to stop this, unless they're playing, like, Offerings to the Doom, which, you know, in previous games against Soul, they have had that in their deck. Um, but I feel like, you know, getting Sangam plus Witch is perfectly fine to do, uh, if they do have Offerings, as it's a very resilient board. 
Uh, luckily for us, though, it looks like they don't have Offerings to the Doom, and that will indeed be the end of the game here. They're just going to Mystical Space Typhoon just to try and get some information about what we're playing, but we've got a Mystical Space Typhoon of our own. So, it worked out in the end for us, and we actually did get to show off a Fusion Summon there, and I think that game does show that the Fusion Summons can allow you to get really aggressive in this format, which can be pretty good. Uh, going into Game 3, I think we might have sided out the Hand Rips for some just sort of generic good cards like Cyber Jar, Kaiku, Bazoo, that sort of thing to get a bit more aggressive. Oh, I think we also brought in a Torrential Tribute because the Water sort of deck can be summoning out a lot of monsters at once. So, you know, if they have a big board state and they summon out a monster, or if we summon out a monster, we can Torrential Tribute to clear that away. So I did bring that in, um, but let's see if it actually comes up. They're going to fire Pot of Greed. They're going to just set two pass back to us. And this is looking pretty decent. That Red Gecky is pretty nice to see. We're just going to Thunder Dragon for two here. And then we're going to bring out a Zambira. Zambira will be able to hit over their set monster. It is a Mother Grizzly. So that will be able to get out another monster from deck. They're going to choose to bring out Revival Jam. Uh, they'll, we'll pass back to them. And they are going to just attack into Zambira with the Revival Jam. Uh, this does decrease its attack. Um, but they're going to use the Revival Jam effect to take more damage. So honestly, we're fine with that. Uh, they used Dark Hole on the Zambira. But, you know, we've got all beaters in hand. So it's pretty fine. Uh, we're just going to bring out this Kaiku, and we are indeed going to write Geki their set, just so we can get in and then clear their Revival Jam, prevent it from coming back. And we are very glad that we write geki there, because that was a Magician of Faith. So, you know, we were able to get that out of the way. We cleared the Revival Jam, and now we gotta think, because we could either get rid of the Grizzly, or get rid of one of the powerful spells that they could potentially recover with another Magician of Faith later. Uh, I think I do go for the Grizzly here, just depriving them of good Reborn or Call of the Haunted targets in Grave. I think that's pretty worth it. Uh, they're just going to set three and pass back to us. And we draw Polymer's Eve, which is pretty great. Now, I could get really aggressive here, and I am going to summon up Bazoo, so this is getting somewhat aggressive. But I figure that they might have set a Mirror Force and just set an additional card to sort of mask its position, so that way if we do go for like a Mystical Space Typhoon, then we wouldn't necessarily be able to hit it. They've got two cards left in hand, so I'm not super confident that it's a Morphing Jar here. Um, and so I am just going to attack in and play around Mirror Force instead of playing around Morphing Jar. You know, even if they do have Morphing Jar here, I feel pretty fine as we are still able to get in for 1800 off the Kaiku and they're very low life points. So of course this would be a terrible hand to lose, but it, it won't be the worst. Unfortunately, it is a Morphing Jar, so we do get a little bit punished here as we aren't able to actually bring out our uh, Twin Head Thunder Dragon. And now with the Versago gone, we're also not able to bring out our Last Warrior from another planet unless we reborn the Versago and also get a Zambira online. So kind of unfortunate here. Uh, they did go for the big brain play of keeping cards in hand with Morphing Jar, and it's a bit unfortunate. So we're going to attack in with the Kaiku, and then just banish the two additional monsters that they got in Grave with Nobleman of Crossout in hand. Magician of Faith is not really a worry for us anymore. Main two, we're just going to set this Polymerization, try and bait out Spell and Trap removal, as it's really unlikely that we'll be able to get our combo online, and we're just going to pass back to them. They're going to bring out a Sangan, which is okay by us. And they're going to Fire Raigeki here, clearing our board. They're going to Reborn a Kaiku, which is a bit unfortunate here, um, as they'll be able to clear some potentially good cards from our graveyard. And they're going to also Fire Mystical Space Typhoon on the Polymerization. That's perfectly fine. Uh, we actually wanted that to happen. So we're going to take 28 here, and they're going to be able to banish two cards from our graveyard. But I still feel pretty good about this. They are going to set one pass back to us. And we draw Jinzo, which is really nice. We could go for a Jinzo play here, potentially reborning one of our monsters and then tributing over it for Jinzo, uh, attacking in to like Sangam potentially. Um, but that is a little bit risky because if we do do this and they've got something like Change of Heart or Snatch Deal, then we basically do just lose the game here. So, I mean, we could always go for the Dark Hole play first and then go for that. Um, which is a bit more insulating. We know that they've used up a Reborn already and they're out of a lot of power spells. Um, so we might want to go for that instead. That might be worth doing. We're going to fire the Dark Hole here either way. And they will get a search off the Sangan here. They're going to grab a Mystic Tomato. 
And I feel like we could have potentially gone for the Jinzo play that would have actually probably been better, especially given that they likely don't have an Imperial Order here. Um, so it probably would have been good just to shut them off from traps, get them down to 600. And we've got Nobleman of Cross out if they try and get more defensive next turn. Uh, plus Kaiku to bring out to attack in as well. So I think we probably did misplay here, but we were playing it a little bit safe. Uh, and it does backfire on us a little bit. They're going to bring out a Sangen off the Call of the Haunted here. And we are going to attack in for 800, banish 2. And they are going to use the effect of Sangen. And this is why this replay is a little bit scuffed. Uh, Michizuri does not actually work this way in this format. Michizuri cannot be activated in the damage step during Android format, even though its current day errata says it can. Um, that's something good to know going forward. Uh, I wasn't quite sure of the ruling at this time, so I just let the games go through, especially because uh, if this had been a trap pool, which is what would likely be in this slot if they weren't playing Michizure, um, this would have cleared the Kaiku either way. So I think that ultimately it's fine. Um, so I just let this happen. And this replay is kind of scuffed because of this sort of thing. Um, but I mean, if we had just played correctly, we wouldn't have had to deal with that anyways. And as you'll see, the Michijuris don't actually make a difference. Uh, if they were trap holes, the game would have turned out the same way. Except it actually probably would have been slightly better for our opponent because uh, they would have still had, like, Call of the Haunted live to bring back Sangan later. So um, I think that, you know, all told, this game still plays out the way a fusion game would play if we had played correctly. We draw off of the Pot of Greed, we get a Painful and a Jar of Greed. And we're going to think about this painful as it's a bit tough at this point. We could go for a really greedy play, potentially doing something like Change of Heart or Snatch Deal to take the Mystic Tomato uh, and tribute over it for a Jinzo. But that only accounts for two of our cards, and we don't really have a game shot here with the others. So we're just going to send a sort of hodgepodge of cards. We're sending a Mirror Force, Sangan, Skull Lair, Kaiku, and some Byra. Uh, if they give us Kaiku or Zambira, we can get over the Mystic Tomato pretty well. Uh, Skull Lair can clear the Mystic Tomato, so they don't want us to have that, probably. Uh, and Sangang can search out another card from our deck. I think Mirror Force was a mistake to send here. I don't think I should have sent the Mirror Force. Um, probably should have sent something else. But, I don't know. I wanted to prevent them from taking this fifth card, and this would definitely do it. But I really think that I misplayed sending the Mirror Force. Um, but they're going to choose to give us the Sangen here, which is ultimately fine. We can set that, get a um, search here, which would be nice. Or we could just get aggressive, reborning a monster, tributing over it for Jinzo, and attacking in for a thousand. We are going to reborn and target Kaiku, and it looks like we're not going to bring out the Jinzo. We're just going to attack in to the Tomato here. And unfortunately, we do get punished. It is a Mirror Force. But, you know, we were playing around this. We wanted to have a monster in hand to set as a backup just in case. Uh, I mean, like, if we had just summoned out the Jinzo, we wouldn't have had to worry about that. But we would have to worry about something like Snatch Deal or Change of Heart just ending the game the next turn. So I feel like this is the safer play. Maybe not the better play, but it was safer. And they're going to bring out a Mother Grizzly attack into our set here. All right, Sangan will search out a Mystic Tomato as we don't really have many targets left in deck. And they're going to attack in to our life points directly with their Mystic Tomato. Uh, they're going to fire Delinquent Duo here, which ultimately is fine. I mean, we could Jar of Greed to potentially get a fourth card in hand to make it less likely that they'll hit the cards that we don't want them to hit. Um, but we just let that go through. I mean, realistically, the only card we really worry about them hitting is, like, Mystic Tomato. Uh, well, they hit Mystic Tomato, so we're going to keep the Jinzo in hand as Nobleman's kind of useless at this point. Uh, we draw Imperial Order. That's not really worth it. Uh, we do draw Call of the Haunted, though, which is very nice. So we'll set Imperial Order plus Call of the Haunted, and I'm feeling okay about this. Although, it is a very worrying position. And they're going to attack him with the Mother Grizzly. And we're kind of in a really rough spot. If we take the Mother Grizzly attack and then call the Haunted to prevent the Mystic Tomato from attacking in, they can Mystic Tomato crash into whatever we bring out and then bring out a Cannon Soldier to end the game. So we do have to fire Call of the Haunted here. And we are actually going to choose to bring out Zambire the Dark. And this actually plays very interestingly with their board here. So if they do potentially attack in to our Zambira with their Mother Grizzly or Tomato to just whittle its uh, attack points down to a point where they can clear it, they actually will lose the game as the first attack will cost 700, the next attack will cost 500, and that's all they've got. So I feel like Zambira is a pretty safe play here. Um, and they are going to 
just choose not to attack into it. So they're going to switch the tomato to defense, set two, and pass back to us. And we draw another Mystic Tomato. And I think we just do want to get a little bit aggressive here, have some pressure. So we're going to think about this a little bit. We, If we summon the Jinzo, then attack into Grizzly, then they can just bring out like Catapult Turtle, which they likely are playing. And that is a hop, skip, and a jump to lethal because 500 off the turtle, 700 off the mother, uh, not the mother grizzly, the uh, tomato, and also whatever they have set. I mean, it's very likely that they can lethal us in that case. So we are going to think about this for quite a bit, and we're actually going to uh, summon out the mystic tomato here. And this is going to be another case where, again, you know, if they had trap hole instead of Michizuri, uh, it would have worked out pretty much the same way. They're going to fire Michizuri here, but again, you know, it would have worked out the same. So um, they're going to bring out a Catapult Turtle, and we're just going to pass back to them. They very likely have lethal damage here, and unfortunately, it looks like they do. They're going to go for their Turtle, burn us for 700, fire it again, burn us for another 700, set one, burn us again for another 700, and that will be the end of the game. So... You know, I think I did misplay there. I think if I had brought out the Jinzo earlier, maybe this game would have turned out a little bit differently. Or if I had gone for the Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon earlier, the game would have turned out differently because that would have been a lot more damage uh, to get in that one turn. But, you know, I played the way I played, and I think it was a defensible way to play. It was just a bit too cautious, and we didn't play around the right things. And that can happen. With these sorts of, like, jank fusion decks, you do have to sort of play at a higher level than you would something like a beast spellcaster deck because the deck is just much more punished because playing, like, subpar cards. Uh, now, if you pull off the combo, that's very good, but it can often be difficult to assemble the combo, even though we did have it online for actually three games, even if the first game they did Imperial Order Us. Now, unfortunately, we didn't get to bring out Last Warrior, which is kind of rough. I wanted to show that off here, uh, as I do think it's a very interesting card. But I do think that this match did show off some of the strengths of the Fusion deck in general. It's just able to get really aggressive. And while we didn't get to show off Last Warrior, I do think Last Warrior is kind of a bit fragile. Like, I'm not really sure it would be the best, even if it does hit the field, as there are just ways to play around it. Of course, against a deck like this, it would be crazy if it hits the field, because this deck is playing six recruiters, it looks like, and uh, Last Warrior would prevent them from doing anything. So, you know, Last Warrior can be a very nice card in this format. It's just the investment that it takes to put into it is pretty rough, and there are many ways to clear it in this format. So, uh, you know, I don't think that this deck is probably higher than Tier 2, uh, but it may firmly rest in Tier 2. It needs a bit more experimentation, and again, there are many other ways to play this. You could use things like Supply to get back your monsters from the graveyard after you Fusion Summoned with them. You could be playing Fusion Gate instead to Fusion Summon that way. However, I don't really like that as much, as it does die to Mystical Space Typhoon and Heavy Storm. And also, you know, we're kind of playing two polymerization here for consistency purposes, not necessarily for repeatability purposes. So you'd probably want to play two fusion gate either way. And I think double fusion gate is a lot more of a brick than double polymerization is. You can also play something like Summoner of Illusions to cheat out things like uh, Last Warrior from Another Planet. Uh, I don't think it's the best, although there are some things you can do with Dimension Hole to make sure that those monsters stick around. But I'm just listing out all these examples because there are a lot of different directions you can go with the Fusion deck. And I think it's one of the places where the most experimentation can be had in Android format. Whether that experimentation actually leads to the deck becoming Tier 1 or not, that remains to be seen. But I hope that this video will encourage you to experiment in it if you want to. And with this video, I think this actually might be the last deck that I've actually been meaning to cover in Android format. Uh, and I'm glad I got to do it because I got to also show off some Buyer of the Dark, which is a common tech in more typical decks that I wanted to show off at least once before I sort of closed out my standard coverage for the format. And I think with this video, I might indeed be doing that. Now, I'm not going to stop making videos about Android. I mean, there's currently an Android tournament going on right now. And if any sort of really cool decks do arise from that and do well from that, then I will likely cover them as well as just covering the finals in general. But now that I've highlighted the decks that I sort of wanted to highlight here, I can now move on to some other formats that I've been meaning to get to. And the first of those will be the sort of LON format, which is the sort of unlimited version of Android format. 
I didn't cover it before Android format because I thought it would be very, very similar to Android format, and I still think it likely will be, but there are some unique decks that do grow stronger when you remove the limited list that Android format has. So my next video will probably be on LON format. Uh, I usually do a tier list to wrap up these formats, but given that the Android tournament is still going on, I'm going to save off on the tier list until that wraps up, just to see if any changes develop in the metagame due to this tournament. But for now, this will be my last Android video for a couple videos. I'll probably come back to it pretty soon, as I said. But for now, uh, I'll be focusing on some more unlimited, like, what-if formats. So, like, LON format, and then after that, I'll be focusing on Silly Snake format, which is going to be incredibly degenerate, but also very, very silly and fun. Uh, I won't spend too, too much time on those, because I generally like to keep the main focus of this channel on the actual official formats that get covered. So after those, I'll be focusing on Joey Pegasus for a bit. But that should be a sort of good roadmap to the upcoming videos on this channel. Anyways, that was sort of a long-winded wrap-up here, but let me know what your thoughts are on this fusion deck down in the comments below, and let me know what changes you might potentially make. Also, let me know if you think there are any decks that I really missed out on in Android format that I should cover before leaving it. Uh, I think I covered everything, but I'm not perfect, and so there might be some important decks that I missed. I look forward to chatting with you all in the comments below, and until next time, I've been Ben from YGO from Zero, and I'm signing off.